Gentlemen, we are facing a crisis. Those of us who are involved in the 3D printing community know all about it. There are simply there are simply too many files. What do I print? How many do I print? How often should I print? Should I print more? Should I print less? What is worthwhile? These are all questions that we have no no answer to. Prob we all have to face the problem that resin is expensive. Yes, that's right. We're going to review STL files, tell you which ones are actually re truly playable, which ones ooze theme, which ones are simply brilliant sculpts, and which ones actually print well. Nothing will hold me back from being savage to even creators whom I adore their sculpture and their work. If you want to keep up to date with this as we go through the most recent files and many of the other ones, let Remember to subscribe and like this video if you want more like it. So how are we going to do this? First, we're going to establish how we will judge these sculpts overall. We'll be working primarily off of the monthly Patreon. So playability. How often do these pieces make it to the table? The theme of each month. The sculpts themselves. How good are they in terms of detail and overall composition? The printability of them. Do they have pre-supported models? Do you have to support them yourselves? How good are the pre-supports? And then finally giving them an overall grade. To begin with, we'll start with troops. These are all very good, heavily armored orc models. They're perfect for an elite cadre in, a, in part in the... They're perfect for an elite cadre in a horde of orcs, or for a more established and industrialized take, perhaps a more medieval orcish uh, civilization. The detail is very solid, very solid. I'm absolutely impressed, almost always, by artists and guild when it comes to detail. Regardless of their gender, you these models, uh, other than being a bit stiff in some cases, the poses are overall very solid. The female orc with the shield on front, the axe raised in a ready stance is an excellent example. The orcs make with the two-handed axe going for the overhead swing has all the energy you would expect out of it. The detail is superb. Uh, the male orc with the shield in front has a bit of an interesting issue where the arm doesn't necessarily uh, seem to fit the ball joint properly in a way that looks entirely natural. It makes them look a little hunched over. And overall, with a little bit of work, you could probably make some very dy dynamic and interesting orcs. But that would that's not that would be something you have to do outside of pre-support prints, print and play. The ward riders. Uh, these are bit the couple of your basic orcs from the set, just on wargs. Personally, I may print one in the future, but they simply don't uh, speak to me. They're interesting. Uh, you might be interested if you want a heavily armored orc vanguard. These could be printed up almost any way, and you would have an excellent model. You could use them to replace your black orcs in a Age of Sigmar or Warhammer army with no issue. Uh, or you could do them up in bright colors if you want to do something of a more noble bright. Uh, I would have liked to see more spears for the these guys. Uh, maybe some halberds, poleaxes, especially on the wargs. The wargs, the wargs, I very much feel like they needed something. Maybe like a yari spear or a halberd. I would point out, I do like that they didn't come with a bow this time. Uh, not every faction needs to have archers. Overall, however, for the troop selection for this month, very good. This brings us on to the uh, elites of the week, of the, the elites of the month, the ogres, and oh boy, got a lot to say about these guys. So there are three, in, three unique sculpts in here. The one that I printed is probably the most, to my opinion, interest, the most well put together and interesting one with the dual axes. Uh, other than suffering from foot-on-rock syndrome, 
These are very chunky models and not simply scaled up orcs. They feel and have a very different profile than the orcs in the set. So thematically, they fit very well. Like the orcs, they tie in, they have the same heavy armor, bone theming going on, and are incredibly expressive. Now, this is one of the highlights of almost every one of the Artisan Guild models that they make. It's, they're amazingly expressive. Uh, however, I've got a few issues when it comes to the other two. One-eyed ogre with the sword and shield. Uh, the sword is alright. I like the sword as an option. I'm not a fan of the small shield. Uh, it just feels like this guy needed something much bigger. The hooded ogre, not a fan at all. The hood, the hood just doesn't... It, it doesn't do anything for me. In fact, it takes away a lot. I probably would have preferred if he, he actually had a helmet. The magic effects coming out of his pauldron skull armor thingy that just... I, I don't understand why they're there. I'm sure it makes sense in the lore that Artisan Guild is written for their own universe, but just in general, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I, I would have liked something to replace the shield arm, maybe. Maybe something like a steel fist or like a punch dagger or some, something like that. Um, these definitely be, these make a good stand-in for conversion into like an ogre army for AOS, either for writers or for man-eaters. Probably could make an ogre tyrant with some conversion work, get some chains and some gut plates in there, maybe file off some of the skull iconography. Overall, a solid effort. Two char We have our two characters for the month. The biggest winner here has to be the sorcerer character. Has to be. No question about it. Uh, this is an excellent model in almost every way. The one I printed didn't. I chose not to do the spell effects. Uh, not the biggest fan of those spell effects. He already has a lot going on with him. But the pose, the composition just oozes strength and character. Once again, the expression is excellent. He feels beefy. Uh, the addition of the book at his hip is just excellent and really sells this guy as a necromancer type. I do have one critique when it comes to his cape. Uh, it is effectively the same texture pattern as the centerpiece model on foot or mounted. Uh, maybe some more work could have been done to differentiate it, maybe give him something a little different, maybe take it off entirely. Uh, then there's the pinup. This one is an orcish smith. Uh, my particular one, I did not print the anvil for the piece, uh, but I probably will in the future. But this is an excellent character study into musculature and making something look feminine, but also have that bulk from a life of work. It's a very entertaining piece to have and a very evocative model. Long story short, this model could be used for a tyrant. Uh, on foot, you could easily have an ogre tyrant come out of this fellow. Everything about this is almost perfect as a centerpiece. Uh, on foot, it's a very nice model. On his Rhinox standard, it's a kick-ass centerpiece. Of course, the big question I have is how exactly he swings his big hammer with that front saddle horn. However, the weapon design itself is amazing and it prints and paints up excellently. Unfortunately, I dropped mine and everything shattered. Uh, otherwise, I would show you so you have to settle with the default image. He feels right. This is an amazing stand-in if you're looking for some kind of ogre leader. It's a very nice mix of fur, bone, metal, and fleshy bits that make it just a treat to paint. Armored woolly rhino. 
could be an excellent stand-in for a Thunder Tusk, a Stonehorn, or a Rhinox. It feels imposing. It's huge. It's a nice, very, very nice piece. Uh, however, it has a couple of issues that start to sh pop up once you start to get into the details. The face is excellently modeled. The legs very much sell the idea of a woolly rhino, but uh, some of the skulls that are attached to the chain don't necessarily feel scaled. They feel, they feel a little bit too large. Let's talk about the Frostmon Clan as a whole. In terms of playability, I'm going to have to give these a 7. There's solid looking shock troops, the vanguard some for some dark lord, or even the slightly grim noble bright orc vanguard. Similarly, in terms of theme, I'm going to have to give you this a 9. They just ooze theme everywhere. They have the expressions that match their armor that match their weapons just beautifully. And it's not necessarily a theme that screams evil, simply grim. In terms of sculpts, I'm gonna have to give them an eight. All of them are excellently conceived models that technically work. There's just a few issues here and there, a few holes that need to be filled. Uh, just some of the sculpting, the character sculpting on those ogres just really holds this whole entire thing back. However, on the individual orcs themselves, brilliant. Uh, the leader, the character, and the centerpiece models are just as brilliant. In terms of printability, then, I'm going to give them an 8. Uh, the pre-supported versions of these, one, they exist, which is which is very convenient for most people. Uh, I've only had a few minimal issues with some very thin pieces, uh, such as the character's sword. One of the handguards didn't print properly. Uh, these are probably issues that are more shocked up to my Epax X1 being, well, an Epax X1. Overall, how would I grade these things? I have to give them a B plus. Overall, it's excellent for anyone looking to invest your resin into it. But I would caution you and say that only if the theme really speaks to you. In terms of conversion, definitely makes me think that maybe it's time to build an AOS Ogre Army. That brings us to the end of our first review, the Frost Metal Clan by Artisan Guild. I hope if you found it useful to have a few actual real world prints of these pieces. If you like this type of stuff, remember to like the video, subscribe for more, and turn on your notification. If you have any suggestions for STL files that I should review next, please leave that down in the comment section below and we'll, I'll see about getting to them. And as always, if you disagree with my opinion, also disagree down in the comment section.